Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck, preparing for the upcoming rotation. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're building this Teamer Treasure deck featuring four copies of a Zorn, a 3 mana 3 2 elemental, saying if you would create one or more treasure tokens, we get to make one treasure token on top of that. So Zorn is excellent in a deck that has plenty of ways to generate treasure. And one very important card in the deck is Magda, Brazen Outlaw, a 2 mana 2 1 legendary dwarf that says whenever a dwarf we control becomes tapped, we get to make a treasure token that also includes Magda herself. So if we can tap Magda with maybe a sentinel to make one mana or a chariot to crew it we also get to make a treasure token without putting Magda in harm's way and then at some point we can sacrifice five treasures to search our library for an artifact or dragon card and put that onto the battlefield so that's one way to potentially cheat old Gnawbone into play the seven mana seven seven legendary dragon with flying since whenever a creature we control deals common damage to a player we get to generate that many treasure tokens so Gnawbone can allow us to make even more treasure to essentially tutor up whatever artifact or dragon we want out of our deck including our four copies of Goldspan Dragon and our three copies of Asika's Chariot which is another artifact we can find with Magda and usually it's not too difficult to take over from there. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck here, starting out with our full playset of our Sentinel, a 1-2 with Reach that can tap alongside an untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color, mostly used alongside Magda to generate treasure without needing to attack with Magda, and also gives us an extra creature to help us ramp into some of our more expensive spells. Then we also have the full playset of Prosperous Innkeeper, 2 mana 1-1, one, one, that when it enters a battlefield it generates a treasure token, and whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we gain one life. So this is also very nice to let us curve into a turn 3 Asika's Chariot, which will also gain us a bunch of life with the Innkeeper in play. Then of course our full playset of Magda, and then two copies of Dragon's Fire as a cheap spot removal spell that gets better if we can reveal one of our big dragons like Goldspan Dragon or Gnawbone. Then at 3 mana, full playset of Zorn, and two copies of Prismari Command, an instant that lets us choose two modes between dealing two damage to any target, target player draws two and then discards two, target player generates a treasure token or destroy target artifact. So Prismari Command can help us dig for the missing combo pieces if we haven't found a Magda yet, for instance. It can also give us a little bit of interaction and of course generates a treasure, which works very nicely in the deck. Then we've got three copies of Asika's Chariots, a 4 mana 4 4 legendary vehicle that has a crew cost of 4, and when it enters the battlefield, it is joined by a pair of 2 2 cat tokens. And when a chariot attacks, we create a token that's a copy of target token we control. So we can copy additional cat tokens, but very important in this deck is that we can also copy our treasure tokens, so that's potentially another way to generate more treasure. Then we've got three copies of Unexpected Windfall, a 4 mana instant. As an additional cost to cast it, we have to discard a card, and then we get to draw two cards and generate two treasure tokens. So we don't get any card advantage, but we get to filter through the deck, maybe discard a land we don't need, and of course generate more treasure. And then at 5 mana we've got our full playset of Goldspan Dragon, the powerful 4-4 hasty dragon with flying, that when it attacks or becomes the target of a spell it generates a treasure token, and treasures we control can be sacrificed for 2 mana instead of just 1, for as long as we control Goldspan. And then topping off our curve, two copies of Old Gnawbone, which we can cheat into play with Magda or simply ramp into using our treasure tokens. And then an excellent way to spend all the extra mana that Gnawbone generates is to take an extra turn with Alrun's Epiphany, which also generates two 1-1 one -one bird tokens with flying. So one great sequence that this deck is capable of is to use Magda and five treasures to grab Old Gnawbone, and in the same turn cast Alrun's Epiphany to take an extra turn. That way we're very likely to be able to connect with our Old Gnawbone and generate a ton of treasure, which can help us further go off with Magda. And that wouldn't really be possible without Magda and our treasures, because it's very difficult to cast Epiphany and Gnawbone in the same turn. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got all 12 pathways in our teamer colors, and then a few creature lands with two copies of Lair of the Hydra, and one Hall of the Storm Giants as additional mana sinks to use all that treasure mana, and then one basic island, six basic mountains, and two basic forests. The mana base can definitely improve with more dual lands in future expansions, but for now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. No green mana for Innkeeper, 
but we do have Zorn plus a few ways to make treasure. I'll try it. Turn one swamp. Followed by turn two swamp. And a disciple to make me discard. Well, say goodbye to Innkeeper, I guess. Experts is going to see double windfall. And then I have to decide if I want to play Prismari Commands or cast Zorn first, which is probably going to die. But then allows me to maybe make more treasure next turn. And if they kill Zorn, maybe they won't be able to kill Goldspan, so there's an advantage there. They make me discard Sentinel can go. Uh, Nighthawk Scavenger does block Goldspan and doesn't die to Prismari Commands. Here we're probably just gonna draw to discard to make treasure. So I can get rid of the Sentinels and maybe hit my land drop for the turn. Maybe we want to get rid of Gnawbone, which we're nowhere close to casting. Since we haven't drawn a land. Yeah. And then Sentinel can maybe come in handy. Do have a Dragon's Fire to take out Scavenger now. But I'll happily take three. Land is good. Probably still in favor of Windfall discarding Sentinel. If I cast Goldspan here, there's a decent chance it ends up dying. And uh, I wouldn't get any treasure from it. If they have something like Soul Shatter. So maybe we wait for them to tap out. Opponent has the 5-2 dragon. Okay, that happens. So the gold span plan would have worked out, but we'll see here. Hits us for 8 in the air. Do I want to kill any of these? Might want to kill the Scavenger now with the Dragon's Fire. Go Windfall, discard Sentinel first. They might kill Zorn in response, but that opens up the window for Goldspan Dragon. Alright, I don't think I mind. Ooh, Magda. Alright, I think we take 8 and then... If we can draw... What do we need to draw here? I guess we'll see. Another Zorn could come in handy. But yeah, probably want to go gold span attack. And then we can still play a bunch of stuff afterwards. So how do we want to sequence here? We essentially have 8 mana. Gonna need 2 mana for Dragon's Fire. It's probably fine to play Chariots to stabilize the ground somewhat, and next turn that can make 2 more treasure if we play Zorn first. So it kind of pays for itself. Could also play Magda. Which can crew the chariot end of turn just to make an extra treasure, so it also kind of pays for itself. I guess that's fair. 
And then we're left with Dragon's Fire for one of the flyers. Can block the Faceless Haven as well. The flyers attack. And then I have to decide which one to take out. Probably the 5 2. Even though Scavenger can block a Gnawbone, whereas Gnawbone blocks the 5 2 nicely. It's kind of a close call. Maybe we do take out Scavenger here. Go to 3. And then try and take over from there. End of turn, we want to make sure to still crew the chariot to make a treasure. Turgrid's lantern. Hmm, that's annoying. Can't afford to pay three life, so I'm gonna have to sacrifice a non land permanence. Well, we can feed treasures to it, although I kind of want to keep my treasures around if possible. So I think we let go of a cat. Alright, so I can play Zorn. Crew chariots with Magda and Zorn, I guess. Although Zorn could block the Haven a bit better. So I guess we'll crew with the two part creatures. Make two treasure. And then Chariot and Goldspan attack. We can copy Treasure, which will make two. So now we can get Old Gnawbone before damage to make more Treasure and then activate Magda even more. So we now have 12 Treasure tokens, so that's two more Goldspans we can get at instant speed. I'll keep the lair in hand to potentially discard to Lantern, but we can also just sacrifice treasures now. Scavenger. That's fine. And yeah, opponent concedes. The Lantern doesn't do anything, and this engine is just going to make too many treasures and fetch up all the dragons and artifacts left in the deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Might end up discarding Gnawbone to the Windfall. Still have a second copy in the deck we can search up. Up against the Blue Reds. Good for Telepiphany and not play Innkeeper, which is a target for removal from the opponent. That way they maybe don't get to spend their mana in an efficient manner. Opponent makes a treasure with Masterpiece instead. And then next turn I can cast Innkeeper, hopefully turn for Goldspan Dragon. Alright, it's gonna be a turn 3 Gullazeth. Don't have the double green to play Sentinel and Innkeeper, sadly. Since I don't want to waste my treasure token here. Opponent's got her own Magda. Alright, line is great. So, I get to play Goldspan and it doesn't even die to a Dragon's Fire from the opponent's. Is going to get countered instead. That's too bad. So fine trading in Keeper for Magda so they don't get too many more treasures. And hopefully draw land for Goldspan next turn. Alright, it's gonna be Chariots or Windfall instead. 
getting my windfall countered would feel bad, but I can do it at instant speed in the opponent's turn, even though that means maybe not playing a land for now. Yeah, that's probably worth it. See what the opponent does end of turn, and then maybe cast a windfall when they're tapped out. Let's do it now. Discard Sentinel. Alright, so we've got land for Goldspan next turn. Could technically play Goldspan attack, play Epiphany. As we see Masterpiece and another Golazeth discarded. Iteration for card advantage. Gotta hope they don't have more counter spells in hand. Masterpiece, probably not gonna get cast here. So it's gonna be a gold span. Alright, so that means the path is clear for our gold span into Epiphany turn. Which should be pretty good. Even a Magda. Alright, so we've got a couple options. I'm liking second gold span, make two treasure, play chariots, and then keep the birds on defense. Or I can attack with gold span and play Gnawbone, which is also tempting. What's better here? If I hit my opponent for eight. That potentially puts them dead to the double goal span attack next turn. Although having a 7 7 in place, pretty nice roadblock. Alright, let's uh, attack, and then I can probably afford to send in one bird as well. And then cast Nobone. Going for. The blue side of the pathway in case we draw another epiphany, although triple red useful for gold spam plus magda. Sadly couldn't play Gnawbone before attacking to make more treasure. Right, Prismari Command takes out our bird. Opponent's empty handed, so not gonna see any attacks. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice hand, starting with Sentinel into Magda is always great. We will need to draw a few lands along the way, but Windfall can help us with that. And I'm just gonna end up making a treasure with Magda instead of attacking for one. Opponent blue whites foretells a card. Alright. So play this as blue probably. And then now I can attack. Could even cast Goldspan Dragon. Although if our opponent has a Doomscar in exile, that's maybe not the best idea. Could tap Sentinel and Magda to make a mana and then just cast a Windfall, maybe discarding Dragon's Fire, which I imagine is not going to be super important in the matchup. So we miss out on a bit of damage, but we save ourselves a treasure token. Alright, back up gold spans, nice. And then we'll pass. They might already have to Doomscar Magda and Sentinel, otherwise Magda threatens to grab a dragon, sacrificing five treasure tokens. It's gonna be a Skyclave on Magda instead. Back up Magda, all right. Well, um, so how about we play Magda for Tel Epiphany? I can make the fifth treasure at instant speed here. And then if our opponent taps out, they might just be dead. Hmm. 
because we can get an old knob bone end of turn. And if that connects, we've got all the treasure in the world to combo off. Opponent foretells another card. Well, I'm just going to get Gnawbone here. They can't counter that. And for two mana, they're unlikely to be able to destroy it. Alright, can cast Goldspan. That's probably going to get countered, but then I can still cast Epiphany afterwards. Alright, it gets disrupted, although I can pay for it. So yeah, our opponent seems very dead. Make 11 treasure. And just take an extra turn with Epiphany. Using the double mana from Dragon. And maybe search up two more dragons with Magda, because why not? Yeah, well, this was pretty brutal. The turn one Sentinel into turn two Magda. Very hard for the opponent to deal with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And uh, yeah, this hand seems keepable. Sentinel into Innkeeper. If we draw land, we can cast Chariot without using our treasure. And there we go. Opponent does have a Shambling Gas, if they can sack it, they can kill my Innkeeper. It's gonna be a turn to Ranger class instead. That's fine. We don't really mind playing against creature decks that don't have many flyers. Can usually go over the top with our dragons and our treasure synergies. And there's Zorn as well. Probably one double blue for Epiphany here. And then we'll just cast the chariots. And next turn I can maybe cast Zorn before attacking with chariot to copy my treasure and make more. We'll see. And Grackmaw joins the fun. A card that hasn't seen a ton of play, but definitely has the stats for that to work out. Great with a Ranger class as well. A red mana, nice pickup. So how do we feel about casting Zorn? And then the Chariots copying a treasure. Don't hate it. And then I can foretell Epiphany as well. Don't really mind if they kill my innkeeper or if we lose the chariots. And they're just gonna take out chariot with a ghast, that works. And then we can still make two mana for Epiphany Foretold. Alright, we've got three treasure tokens. Can cast Windfall if we draw another land. Level up on Ranger class allows Gregma to hit for four. Prismari Command, also decent. So we've got a few options. Could also Windfall discarding Prismari Command, draw two, and then use our Sentinel for mana. And make three treasure thanks to Zorn. So if we draw Magda, we could combo off here. Another Zorn. Could cast Epiphany and waste most of my treasure. Don't think that's worth it. So let's just attack. And then, yeah, we're hoping to find Magda. Goldspan Dragon could be excellent as well.
And then I think I keep Forest in hand as discard fodder. I'm not gonna cast Zorn just yet. Gragma 5-5. Five, five. Get to untap, back up Innkeeper. Alright, I guess we can empty our hand out here. Place our urn into Innkeeper to make more treasure. And then could attack with all and then maybe just cast the Epiphany anyway here. And then I can activate Lair of the Hydra in my extra turn if we don't draw anything. Deadly Dispute sacking Eye Twitch. Yeah, I think our opponent might just be dead to Epiphany and an extra attack step. Well, this just shows the advantage of making a lot of extra mana. Did they draw anything they can cast for three mana here? Another dispute on the treasure, that's fine. And our opponent explodes, can just turn our creature sideways and that's game. Even had the lair as an extra finisher, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Innkeeper can ramp into Goldspan and then a Dragon's Fire for interaction. With a 4-powered creature to reveal. Facing an aggressive white weenie deck. The life gain from Innkeeper gonna come in handy there. Red White could be a Spirit Tribal deck as well. So don't necessarily want to trade Innkeeper when we have more creatures coming up, but it wouldn't be a bad trade. So we'll see if the opponent even wants to offer. It's gonna be a plate armor, so I guess they've got some equipment synergies. Opponent stays back, is Sika's chariot. That's exciting. So I could play the chariot and then next turn play Innkeeper before attacks to copy the treasure. Or I could just play Innkeeper and then next turn cast Goldspan and have Dragon's Fire, which might be better. Close call. The fact that we're not left with a treasure after we cast Chariots makes it a little awkward since we won't be able to really uh, leverage the Chariot as nicely, so yeah, we'll play and keep her. And then probably one double reds over blue. Could still Dragon's Fire if really necessary. If I Dragon's Fire now, then I save myself one extra mana next turn, since I don't have to pay the ward tax. So it might be worth it here. Although if we wait, then Goldspan makes my treasure tap for two mana instead of one, so... And our opponent packs it in, Goldspan makes a treasure, can cast a Magda with a treasure afterwards if we want to, and then Chariot plus Magda to make even more treasure, another Goldspan. Yeah, I don't think we're losing this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. So, probably gonna end up casting Turn 2 Magda, and then turn 3, assuming Magda trades or dies, 
can play a backup and a tapped hall. No one mana removal spell at least. Professor of Symbology finds Environmental Sciences, Zorn to draw. So now I don't hate playing Zorn and then attacking with Magda, make two treasure. And then I can use it to treasure to play another Magda afterwards after they trade. Sure. Might want to go with green for Lair of the Hydra or red for another gold span. Kind of a close call. Let's go with red. Could also just keep my treasure to play gold span next turn, which is also reasonable. Is that better? Yeah, that's probably better. And then we get to make two treasure thanks to Zorn. Chariot could also copy our treasure tokens, so we have a lot of great options. But I think gold span attack. And then how do we feel about casting Magda? Opponents on three mana next turn four, so I'm not really afraid of a sweeper yet. Could also cast Chariots or go Magda for Telepiphany. Magda for Telepiphany is decent, although if we play Chariots next turn we can crew it with Magda to make more treasure as well. So that's probably the most powerful play overall. Bonus got their own chariots. So yeah, what we can do is play Magda pre-combat. And I think our opponent's just gonna die to a few extra turns here. But yeah, play Magda pre-combat. That and a cat can crew chariots. And then chariot can copy a treasure token to get two more thanks to Zorn. And our opponent's gonna be in trouble here. Opponent's gonna trade chariots, which is fine by me. Can already activate Magda, can even do so pre-damage to get old Gnawbone. Yeah, that seems fun. Yeah, this deck is doing some busted things. Especially if we draw Magda. And cast Epiphany. So this was turn 5 and our opponent was super dead since we could take 2 extra turns. So yeah, this deck can do some ridiculous things, especially with Magda. Zorn also powering up the deck nicely, so we get to see that in action as well. And then, yeah, Chariot's probably making more treasure in this deck than cat tokens. Not really something you would expect but uh, treasures are just so useful and powerful in this deck. So yeah, overall very satisfied with where we ended up. Now the deck isn't perfect, of course, if you don't draw Magda, the deck's not going to be as impressive, just relying on Goldspan as your main win condition at that point. And then the mana base is also one of the weaker aspects of the deck right now, since we don't have a lot of great dual lands that come into play untapped reliably, since the Snarls aren't very good. So we're mostly just hoping to draw the right lands to start out with, but a new dual land cycle in the next expansion could help with that. And then hopefully we get more treasure cards to give us more synergies throughout the deck. If we don't get any more treasure cards, then the deck of course isn't gonna improve much in the future but uh, it's pretty decent as is. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.